We have two weeks left of comp. The goal is to finish the groundwork this week and then next week have uh, three holistically classes on readings from the metaphysics and morals. So I'll put those up on the blackboard. We'll see uh, how much we get. Two weeks from no assignment. Two weeks from today, and we need to get on that. So same deal as last time. If you have questions about this, let me know. Uh, you need to find some bit of secondary literature, and my suggestion is that you do that. Uh, hunt around for a topic, for an author, for an area that makes sense, and then work from that to develop the paper. You can email, yeah, yes, you should email to me, you should um, get my feedback, my approval for the topic and the secondary letter. Yes. Same as last Okay, we wound up talking about the idea of imperatives last time. And the thought was that purely rational creatures would necessarily always act on the basis of practical reason. That's what it means to say they are purely rational. So their subjective good, what they take to be worth pursuing, would necessarily coincide with the objective good, what actually is good. But for us imperfectly rational creatures, our um, subjective good, what we take to be good and worth pursuing, may diverge from the objective good because our inclinations, our empirical desires, present us with certain ends as good, even if they're not. So, reason responds to this situation, so to speak, um, by giving us imperatives. And these are commands of reason telling us that something is good, objective. Perhaps contrary to our imaginations. And there are two ways that reason, practical reason, can declare something to be good, objectively good, of course. First, it can declare something to be good instrumentally. And in that case, we get a hypothetical imperative. It tells us that something is good, and therefore rational, because it will help us get something else, which, we take, which it takes to be good. So on condition that that end is good, a hypothetical imperative is going to tell us to do something else. It's going to tell us that something else is good on the assumption that some further end is good. It's good, the action or whatever, the thing that is commanded, is good because it will bring about what is assumed. Or, so all that was saying that there are hypothetical imperatives which tell us that something is good. And the explanation for that is that it is good for bringing about something else, which is taken to be good, which could be taken. But there are also uh, imperatives that tell us that something uh, is good and rational for its own sake. Um, and this is what a categorical that something is good for its own sake, rational to do, not because it will bring about some further end, which is taken to be good, could be taken to be good, but for its own sake. And that's what a categorical imperative asserts. And then there was the special kind of hypothetical imperative um, when the end is happiness, um, that's something, an end that we are assumed to want. And then one of these imperatives is going to be hypothetical. It's going to tell us what to do in order to bring about that. OK. Questions about that so far? All right. So hypothetical uh, imperatives. So what do you call them? 
imperatives of skill. He says these are easy to understand. Um, that is, it's easy to understand why they say that something is rational or good. As he says, um, at the bottom of page 30, how an imperative of skill is possible probably requires no special discussion. Whoever wills the end, whoever wills the end also wills insofar as reason has decisive influence on his actions, the indispensably necessary means to it that is in his control. Um, As far as willing is concerned, this proposition is analytical. Analytic. For in the willing of an object as my effect, my causality is already thought as an acting cause. Um, okay, so remember, first of all, that this claim that whoever wills the end also wills the indispensably necessary means insofar as he is rational. This is, um, he claims, analytic. Um, but I want to emphasize that this is a claim about willing, not simply a claim about, for example, mere wishing. So I can wish that I could get rich simply by standing on the corner with the bucket and wish that, hope that gold will appear in it. But I'm not willing that end in that case. Or I'm not doing it rationally. Um, in order to will an end, I have to take the necessary means that are in my control uh, in order to pursue it. Sometimes the um, literature talks about the hypothetical imperative. Um, you notice there are many hypothetical imperatives. There are many imperatives of skill telling us what means will lead to what possible ends we can end up. Um, but sometimes the literature talks about the hypothetical imperative. That's not what Kant is doing. Kant is asking how hypothetical imperatives can recommend some action as good. Um, but the thought of the hypothetical imperative is supposed to be sort of the generalized case, something like what he's describing here. Has, obviously. Um, so the hypothetical imperative is supposed to be a requirement of practical reason that tells us that we must take, that it's rational, to take the essential means to pursue our ends. What I want to emphasize about this requirement is that although it's a requirement of reason, Requirement, practical reason that we take the essential means to the ends that we have. This is something that we imperfectly rational creatures may sometimes violate. I'm talking again about the hypothetical imperative, the generalized requirement that we take the rational means to our end. We imperfectly rational beings sometimes violate this requirement. So sometimes we do, in fact, will an end, not simply wish for it, but fail to take the necessary means to pursue it. So you can think about this kind of case. Anybody have an example in mind? A case in which we fail to take the rational means that are necessary for the end that we will, not merely wish.
to save money or they would love frivolous to pay so much money they thought they would have or intended to have to pay for a car. So they didn't, I don't know, so they didn't plan, but they didn't employ the rational hands of the computer hands. Okay, well, so there are two different possibilities here. One is we give, our, we give ourselves an end and we didn't really consider whether we would, whether it's a rational end for us to have, so maybe we change our mind, right? So for sure we can revise our ends, um, but we need a case where somebody ho wills an end, holds on to that end, continues to take that to be an end that they're willing, but is not taking the essential means to it. Any of you smokers? No. Do you take health to be an end? That is one that you have? Not necessarily health, no. Any smokers who take health to be your end? Not so much. All right, well, so look, you can imagine a smoker who takes health to be his end, but feels and knows that smoking is going to interfere with that end, but still feels the pull of that cigarette. The desire, the empirical desire is still a strong pull. And without giving up the end of health, still, when that cigarette is right in front of him, goes for it. So, cases of weakness of will are cases like this. Now, some philosophers have doubted the possibility of genuine weakness of will. I don't think Kant does. I think Kant thinks that when we will an end, but sometimes don't take the essential means to that end, we are violating what I've called the hypothetical imperative. The explanation of this is that there's a kind of practical irrationality. We're doing something that, not doing something, that uh, interferes with achieving some end that we have, that we continue to get. And again, because we are imperfect rational creatures, Sometimes we violate the hypothetical imperative related to an end that we have. I want you to think about the analog to this kind of practical irrationality. I want you to think about the analog to this kind of practical irrationality on the theoretical side. So on the theoretical side, maybe think about the principle of non-contradiction. Sometimes we